a luxurious looking wall base made by simply grouting the wall for a joint. This video would be exceptionally useful for those who has uneven walls and uneven floors and tiled and stone flooring. Every project starts with a thorough cleaning. I vacuumed the floor and the walls around the joints I was going to fill with grout and wiped the tiles with a damp cloth. I then prepared the grout. I was using some salmon-based grout left over, mixed it with an old mixer according to the manufacturer's instruction on the label. If you wish to know some tips about how to use salmon-based grouts, click on the link in the description of this video. To fill the gaps I used my favorite small rubber grout spreader. You can find a similar one under the link in this video's description. I recommend not to use metal or plastic troubles, they would scratch the surfaces and leave great tracks on them. As the gap between the tiles and the wall was deep and sometimes wide, and according to the manufacturer's manual of this specific salmon grout, the gap shouldn't have exceeded the widths of 2mm because otherwise the grouts crack. I decided to fill the gap in two steps, leaving it to dry between grouting for two hours or so, but for more assurance it could be left to dry overnight. Second round of grounding is finishing, that's why it should be neat. To shape a neat joint line I used my fingers. Yes, might be not the best idea, but I got used to working with bare hands. Frankly, I always use my fingers to make the joints neat. But for those who like to keep their hands clean, there are some grouting tools that have thousands of good reviews and great overall ratings on Amazon. You can find some of them in the description of this video. Few words about the materials in the video. Here we have 1.2mm thick ceramic tiles and painted concrete blasted walls. I also tried this method with trivals and worked perfectly well. Although it wouldn't work with wooden, laminate and vinyl spores because of their expansion and contraction based on the environment's temperature fluctuation. When the grout was in place, I wiped away the excess with a damp cloth. And the hardest part, which demands some skills of precision, is to draw a straight line on the wall above the grout. It defines the thickness of the joint between the floor and the wall. I used the same paint applied to the wall before. I also tried to use masking tape on the one of the walls, but it didn't work as well as drawing a line with my kit's 6mm paintbrush. As you can slowly see the outcome, I'd like to say about the advantages and disadvantages of the grouting the joint between the floor and the wall. The pros. First, the method of finishing the walls or joints looks luxurious, if the work is neat, of course. Second, I think it's the cheapest way to finish the wall or joints. Third, it also works with drywalls. I tried it with gypsum wall boards and OSB or plywood. And it's a perfect solution for crooked walls and even tiles and stone flooring. And cones. First, the meters won't work with new built houses. The shrinkage of a new built house lasts for about a year, so if you're okay with waiting a bit, this argument could be unneeded. Second, it won't work with timber, laminate, and vinyl flooring. Third, the grouting requires some accuracy. Grouting the gap between walls and floors could be a great solution for those who have uneven surfaces, has a tiny budget, wants to have an expensive look, and of course, treats his or her house with love and care. You can see the results and some more pictures of the process by visiting a blog post following the link in the description. More of useful videos and information at alovemadehome.com. Thank you for watching.